Now let's automate some indicators. First, let's automate this arrow indicator. The indicator is located within a subfolder in the indicators folder. If you look at the color settings, you will notice that buffer ID 2 is for buy and buffer ID 3 or color ID 3 is for sell signal. Now let's do a backtest for this indicator with our automator. We want to buy when blue arrow appears and sell when red arrow appears. If you are using a buffer based indicator, it is not necessary to have the indicator running on the chart. You just need to have the indicator file within the indicators folder. But since we want to see whether the EA takes the trades correctly according to the arrow signs, we will run the indicator during the backtest. To do that, you can simply add the indicator to the chart and then save it as a template in the exact same name of the EA. Now let's have a look at the settings. Here you need to enter the name of your indicator. It has to be exactly the same as your indicator file name. If the indicator is within a subfolder within the main indicators folder of your MT4, then you need to enter the folder path as well. Since our indicator is located within a subfolder called automator within the mt 4s indicators folder, we add indicator slash and then the exact name of the indicator. Then you need to select the type of the indicator we are automating. It is of the first type as we discussed earlier. Now we need to identify the color IDs for buy and sell signal. We have already identified that the color ID for buy signal was 2 and the color ID for the sell signal was 3. This is the candle that the EA looks for possible signals. 0 means the current forming candle and 1 means the previously completed candle and so on. For instance, if you have 1 here, the EA will always look at the immediately completed candle for any buy or sell signals. Most indicators tend to repaint within the current candle and therefore you need to be careful in using zero here. If your indicator is heavily repainting, then you may consider increasing the candle ID. However, on the other hand, this may lead to delayed trade entries. Now these settings are applicable for objects based indicators only. Therefore you can leave these settings. But here, these trading settings are applicable for all indicators. You can change them as necessary. You have so many options such as ATR based stop loss and pending orders instead of market orders, OCO orders, Martingale and time based filters and a news filter. You can pause trading during news time and also you can use a second uh, indicator to filter the signals of the first indicator which we will discuss later and also you have few other filters like choppy market filter and EMA filter. Now let's run the backtest. You will notice that the EA took the trade when the red arrow appeared. Now let's look at another indicator. This is a type 2 indicator which we discussed earlier. It has a single line with two colors and we want to buy when blue line starts and sell when red line starts. You will notice one is 
for sell and color ID 2 is for buy. Under the settings, we have to map the correct color IDs according to this indicator and also we have to change the name. If, if your indicator was directly under the indicators folder, you don't have to specify the folder path. You can simply add the indicator's name there. Now you have to select the correct type of the indicator. This is type 2. So you have to set it as true and set others as false. Let's leave all other settings as defaults. We will also save a template with this indicator so that we can see the indicator when the backtest is running. Now let's run the backtest. You will notice that the EA took a buy trade when the blue line started. Now let's have a look at the third type of indicators that can be automated with our automator. This is a two line cross indicator. We buy when blue line crosses above the pink line and we sell when blue line crosses below the pink line. Let's have a look at the settings. First we need to change the name of the indicator. Name is MA cross indicator. You need to paste the indicator's name there with the folder path since the, the indicator is located within a subfolder. Otherwise, you simply paste the indicator name there. Then you have to enable the type 3 and disable others. And also, then identify the buffer numbers or color IDs and update the settings accordingly. We leave other settings as default and run the backtest. You will notice that a trade was taken, a buy trade when the blue line crosses above the pink line. Now let's automate an object pace indicator. This is a harmonic pattern indicator which we discussed earlier. And let's try to automate this indicator. We want to buy when blue triangle appears and sell when red or pink triangle appears. Let's save this as a template so that we can see the indicator when the backtest is running. Now let's look at the settings. You can add the indicator name. However, adding indicator name is not compulsory for object based indicators. The EA will work even if you don't add the indicator name because the EA is only reading the objects on the chart. It is not running the indicator from the background. So it is important that you keep the indicator running on the chart in order for the EA to recognize the objects and trade accordingly. Also note that color IDs and the candle ID are not relevant to object based indicators. But you need to map the object properties in the settings in order for the EA to recognize the objects. Now let's try to identify the object name prefix. If you look at the objects and you will notice that each of the triangle has a name prefix starting with PZHT12. So we can use this as the object name prefix. Then we need to identify the colors of the objects for the buy and the sell signals. We can open an object and under the command tab you can find the color. Then you need to set the right color to buy and sell signals under the settings. Then you need to update the time parameter for the objects. If you 
open an object, you will notice that there are three time parameters and the latest one is the third one. Therefore, we need to enable the third time parameter under the settings. And also make sure you keep others as false. Now you need to set a time period for filtering objects. It is mentioned in minutes and any object which is older than the period given here will be ignored by the EA. We will leave the other settings as defaults and let's start the backtest. You will notice that a bitrate was placed when the blue triangle appeared. 